Hi friends, this is Susie, your gaming guru, here to help you solve the puzzle of level 2109 in Candy Crush Saga, yet again. Uh, King really has been changing a lot of these levels, they always do, and this time they've been adding in a lot of bubblegum pop. And it's a problem because bubblegum pop is a blocker, but it's also a help because if we can get these to pop, they explode with force and help us to clear out other things. So in order to get to all 70 jelly, I know I need to get rid of the frosting and the bubblegum pop, but then notice I also have to get in here. We've got jelly under here as well. So I need to collect these keys as quickly as possible. Notice that I collect that one by cascade. I really want to make the most impact on the board that I can. Unfortunately, I don't really have any choices here. I just have to take this move and wait for my reshuffle. All right, now we're putting the blue together a bit. I'll move the orange back over here. We're making some progress. I'm going to come this way. There we go. Now we're hitting these a couple times. See how we go from wrapped to slightly cracked to more cracked? When we, get, when we get them entirely cracked, that's when they explode and they can set a chain reaction off and take care of the others that are getting cracked. I'm going to do this move. I should have done the orange first. It would have set up a better situation for me. Okay, here we go. Boom, boom. Close. We're getting there. Boom. All right, and let's try to reach in. Now here we go, we're gonna get that last key, so now we can get to this bubble gum. But here's where I need to make moves as low to the ground as possible. This is ready to pop, but the rest aren't. So I need to get them in that field. I need to try to bring things down, but I'm noticing the problem is I've got five colors on this board. It's hard to deal with five colors. Now this looks pretty good, it would hit this, but watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this down. There we go. Brought that wrapped candy down here. Here's another wrapped candy. I don't think this is gonna be enough to get everything done, but at least it shows me I'm on the right path. And I'm actually gonna play this again uh, with the microphone on. Usually I skip right to without the microphone. But one thing that I did here is I played very quickly and didn't make the best use of the moves. So even if I can't get as many as uh, 40 of these cleared out on this next run, I'll know at least that I'm playing better. I can do this move. I prefer this move because it reaches down further and it may bring the purple together over here. There we go to make some cascades. Now what I'd love to do is drop this green down one. I can't. This is the only move I have. So there's no strategy involved in that when you don't have any choice in moves. This is the move that it is being recommended, not because they say that it's the best choice. They just, if, if you really don't know, if you can't see a move at all on the board, they're just giving you a suggestion that, well, you could move this. Sometimes it's the best move, but oftentimes it's not. I prefer this. We're hitting more of these guys. And now it's the only move. All right, and this is the only move, but I actually like that move. It has a lot of different things. And here's where I'm gonna make a better choice than I did on the last run. I'm gonna do this, which is gonna take out this, hit these guys and open them up a bit, but it's also going to drop this down, which is going to hit these guys. So a much better choice in my opinion. Now I've got a, a few decisions here. I could do this to open up the key. I could do this to hit the bubble gum or I could avoid the orange. I'm not going to collect the key. I'm going to work on that bubble gum that's close to being popped. I'm going to keep trying to pop it because the bubble gum can have a stronger effect on that key and everything else. Not going to take this move. I'm going to get rid of the blue to try to concentrate down those other colors so I can make a special. Now I'm kind of stuck again. I don't have any great moves. I could do this and hope another green follows and open this up. I'm going to take out the um, intervening stuff so I can try to make a striped wrapped combo. Oh, I can also make another wrapped, but I don't want to lose this. Everything could explode and that would be bad. So let's do a bit of this and we're going to see some of that cascading effect as we open these up. 
one last little bit to get down here. This key. I really need this key. There we go. We're going to get that key. Okay, I'm going to go for a color bomb. Oh, I'm not going to get a color bomb. Look, everything's going to explode. So that's one of the problems of the bubble gum. It, it explodes and sometimes it ruins what you're trying to set up. All right, I like this because the blue is going to come down. Now I don't like really anything. Oh, actually, I like this one over here. Ah. <sighs> This one's not so good. I could try to get a blue, but I don't have enough time. Oh, here, I'll bring this down. There we go. That works well. Okay, so even though it's not spectacular, I'm moving in the right direction. Watch this. This is going to have some explosive force here. Yeah, so much better turnout this time than last time. Paying attention to the moves is so important because Sometimes on these hard levels, you need a lucky board, but I can take a lucky board and ruin it by playing poorly. So you really have to concentrate on turning that luck into a win. I'm going to pause the recording now and come back without the microphone, but I will bring it back on when I have something important to share. Okay, so this looks fairly decent. Now I've got orange in good spots, but I still have a lot to clear out, especially over here. So I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. It's just so thick still here. I have to hope that we get amazing cascading. Well, actually we're getting really good cascading. Okay, two moves for jelly. I can take two out here it's not likely to cause enough cascading to help here or here. I can take one thing out. I mean, I can create a color bomb and then hope that we get some good stuff to go with it. So if I take out all red, it gets rid of this and it gets rid of this. And then this drops down and it gets rid of this. That's three. We get rid of these. If a blue drops in, we got it or some other chaotic thing happens. Now let's see if I take out blue. This goes away. This goes away. This goes away. This doesn't. That doesn't work. And this doesn't work. So my best bet is red and hoping for the best. Now, here's the thing. I used to play 10 tries, and if I didn't make it in 10 tries, I would bring in boosters. Then I switched to 100 tries. If I tried a level 100 times and I didn't get it, I would bring in boosters. I have tried this just over 100 times. I hate to say it, but now I know why you're having such a hard time with it, Cub. Sometimes we have to use those boosters. Now, on levels like this, it's kind of hard to start with a booster, like a color bomb. I mean, if you get a color bomb wrapped candy combo right away, that might really help. But you can waste a lot of boosters because uh, just bringing in a color bomb when you've got a limited field up here is not likely to help much. You can open up a key and get a head start, but it's still not a guarantee. What I like to do is wait until I am like this and use one of my in-game boosters that is guaranteed. Of course, it wants me to use the party popper because this is a really 
elusive, expensive booster. I've never purchased anything for this game, but if I wanted to, that would be an expensive purchase, and it's hard to get them. I only know to get them at any level that ends in 000, like 1,000, 2,000, and so on. We used to be able to get them a bit more generously, and that's why I have a storage of them. But I think, because remember how we said, if I take out all red, we get rid of this, we get rid of this, and this drops down. This is the only one that's a problem. So because of that, I'm going to invest in a booster. That's what these boosters are for, to help us out of really difficult situations. I could maybe get some cascading to help here, but I can't guarantee it. If I take this out right now, I'm assured to get everything else. Now here's something that could happen. I have done really silly things before, like I use a booster and then I go, okay, and then I combine that color bomb with the blue and get mistaken as to what was going to work. So I want to review it in my head. Again, when we get some luck, and I got some luck on this board, we need to capitalize on it by playing well. So I think it's red I take out. If I take out red, this goes away, this goes away, this drops down. So red is my target color. I'm taking out red. That solves it. Solved it using a booster. Now, could I play an additional 100 times and win without a booster? Likely. I mean, I could play maybe one more time and win without a booster, or a thousand times and not win. When we've got a difficult level like this, sometimes it's best just to go ahead and make that investment. And this is a nightmarishly hard level, and I don't give myself that privilege very often. Not because I don't like using boosters. I think they're part of the game. I think they're a wise investment. It's only because some people don't have boosters to use. So here's my recommendation if you're really stuck on a level and you don't have boosters. Only play the level about five or ten times a day so you keep your skills up and you understand how the board is played and you evaluate what boosters might help most. Then use the rest of your Candy Crush time playing your events and building up boosters. And do that for about two, three weeks until you have some boosters built up. And then once that happens, you go back in with all of your starting boosters, your color bomb, your striped ripped combo, anything else that they're going to give you like a fish or a coconut wheel. Go in fully armed and then use as many boosters as you need. If you get a relatively good hand, I mean, if even with those starting boosters, you have an awful opportunity, then don't throw more boosters at it. But if those work to get you part way there and you just need a little help at the end, I would rather throw 10 or even 20 boosters at one level and be done with it than to uh, take a really hard level and, and use a couple of starting boosters every time and play 100 times and still not win. Investing 20 boosters is so much better than investing 200 boosters, especially when the 20 boosters will likely get you that win. All right, that's my advice for everything. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put those below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I wish everyone the best of luck and better luck than I had. Bye-bye.